this is example 32 in our differentiation topic. We've been looking at parametric differentiation. Example 30, we had a look at what a parametric function was. Example 31, we had a look at how to differentiate like a basic parametric function. This example, we're going to uh, have a look at differentiating functions which already have fractions in them. And it means we maybe set out our um, our derivatives slightly differently when we get to there. So we've got a, a parametric function, two equations in x and y, and we're wanting to find dy by dx. So first thing I have to recognize is that these fractions need to be rearranged or rewritten in order to differentiate them. So 1 over t plus 1, I can write down as t plus 1 to the power of negative 1. I've got a, an index so that I can start to differentiate it. And in the same way with the y term, I've got the fraction 3 over 2, and I've got the t is on the bottom of the fraction, so again, it will have a power of negative 1. Watch that you don't bring the 2 up as well to make it um, like 6 t to the power of negative 1. It's just 3 over 2 is the fraction. It stays that way. So we can differentiate dx by dt uh, by doing multiplying the outside term using the chain rule. Uh, so negative 1 multiplied by the 1 that's there is just negative 1 times t plus 1. Reduce the power by 1 and multiply by the derivative of the term in the bracket, which happens to be 1. So I'm left with the, the fraction 1 over t plus 1 squared. dy by dt, I'll just move this over. Um, in the same way, dy by dt is multiplying negative 1, so we've got negative 3 over 2 multiplied by t to the power negative 2, which is negative 3 over 2 t squared. So this is the point where I need to work out a third derivative, and this is the one that we really want. We want to find dy by dx, which is the rate of change of the y coordinate with respect to the x, so we can work out the gradient uh, of the, f the function, for instance, if we need to do that. So we had a look in the previous example where we did this, dy by dt divided by dx by dt, and that's good when it's just uh, a, a, a linear term that, where there's no fractions involved. But in this case, if we did this, you notice we're going to end up with a, a kind of a four-decker uh, fraction. We're going to have a fraction at the top in the numerator and the fraction in the denominator. So it doesn't actually help us to use that form. The two options, either we do the dy by dt and we use the dividing sign rather than the line, and then we do dx by dt. Okay, That's one option. The other option is to go back to where this came from, which is the chain rule, and do dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx. Okay. At some point, we're going to have to flip things around, either in the formula here or when we actually put the um, the fractions in. So I'm going to keep it like this just now because it's in the same form as the other one that we used, dy by dt divided by dx by dt. So we can substitute in dy by dt is negative 3 over 2t squared divided by dx by dt, which is negative... 1 over t plus 1 all squared. Okay. Uh, dividing by a fraction we cannot do, and so hopefully you remember that we can multiply by the second fraction as long as we invert the actual fraction involved. The denominator becomes the numerator, and the numerator becomes the denominator. Um, at that point, if I can simplify it before I multiply, then I do, but there's nothing really to simplify. We can say that the two signs, negative times a negative, means the answer is going to be positive. And our numerator then becomes 3 times t plus 1 all squared divided by 2t squared. That is dy by dx. That's the derivative of the parametric function with respect to x. Okay? So that's the form we would use if you've got fractions in your dy, dx by dt, dy by dt 
to keep them separate instead of making one big, huge, complicated fraction. So have a, a go at some of these things, and then we'll have a look at, in the next example about how we can apply that to find the equation of a tangent. Okay.